Are you looking to supercharge your all-in-one reef tank's health and water quality? In today's video, we're diving deep into the world of refugiums. Discover why setting up a refugium can be a game changer for your aquatic ecosystem, and stay tuned for step-by-step -step tips on how to do it right. Let's dive in. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be talking about the benefits of a refugium and how to set one up in the back chamber of an all-in-one aquarium. So first, you might ask, what is a refugium? A refugium is a separate compartment or area within an aquarium system that specifically designs to provide a controlled environment for the growth and cultivation of beneficial microorganisms, macroalgae, and small invertebrates. The term refugium comes from the word refuge, highlighting its purpose as a safe haven for certain organisms. Why add a refugium? Basically, a refugium serves as an additional space within your aquarium system that offers several advantages for the overall health and stability of the ecosystem. First, nutrient control. A refugium provides a designated area where macroalgae can grow. As it grows, it consumes excess nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates, helping to maintain optimal water quality in the main tank and preventing the growth of undesirable types of algae such as green hair algae. Next, biodiversity. A refugium creates a safe haven for beneficial microorganisms like copepods and amphipods to thrive where the fish can't get to them and eat them. They can grow and reproduce in the refugium and then some can pass into the main display where they can serve as a natural live food source for your fish and corals contributing to the biodiversity and the overall health of the ecosystem. Next, we have gas exchange. Macroalgae in the refugium performs photosynthesis, absorbing carbon dioxide and producing oxygen. This contributes to better gas exchange within the system and helps maintain stable pH levels. Finally, educational opportunity. Setting up and maintaining a refugium provides a great opportunity to learn more about the intricacies of aquarium ecosystems, nutrient dynamics, and the relationships between different organisms. The next question to consider is which type of macroalgae to use. Choosing the best macroalgae for your refugium depends on factors like your goals, tank size, lighting, and more. Two common options include Ketomorpha and Grossularia, although there are several other good options out there. First, Ketomorpha, or Keto for short, is a popular choice due to its fast growth and nutrient uptake. It's easy to maintain, doesn't need intense light, and can be regularly harvested. Grossularia is an attractive red macroalgae that absorbs nutrients well. It needs moderate to high lighting and regular trimming. Now make sure when you do get your macroalgae that you source it from reputable suppliers and rinse it in tank water first to avoid introducing pests or diseases. When I started my first refugium in my BioCube 16, I made a really big mistake here. I did not inspect or rinse my keto. I added it to the back chamber, and then when I turned on the pump, a half a dozen bristle worms came shooting out of the return, and I had to scramble to try and remove them. In my refugium for this tank, 
I decided I wanted to go with a red macroalgae. With its vibrant coloration, red macroalgae can be a stunning addition to a display tank. I personally love the aesthetic appeal and I believe it'll be easier to find takers for it if it grows quickly and requires regular trimming and removal. I ordered two different types of red macroalgae a few weeks ago, the Grossularia hayi and Botrioclatia. They are both beautiful and not likely to spawn in an aquarium, which is a very important consideration because certain types of macroalgae are known to go sexual and spawn in an aquarium, which can allow them to spread out of control in a tank. As anticipated from my research on the two types of red macroalgae, the Grossularia has grown much faster, so I think it'll be a better choice to grow in my refugium. Also, the small grape-like bladders of the Botrioclatia do occasionally break off, so I would be worried if they were in the refugium, they could come off and clog up the return pump, which will be in the next chamber over. So I'll be trying the Grossularia, and if for any reason it doesn't thrive as expected in my refugium, I can always transfer it back to the display tank where it can still contribute to the beauty of the aquarium. And then I would switch to the more commonly used keto in the refugium. Now let's talk about setting up the refugium in the middle chamber. I've already moved all of my filter media into the first chamber using the Reef Casa Housekeeper media rack a few weeks ago. I keep filter floss on the top shelf, which I change out every few days, then Chemipure Elite, and then Matrix Media. Now, in order to make room for the refugium in the middle chamber, I also moved my heater out of that chamber and into the third chamber, which is the return chamber for this tank. An important thing here is that you have to always keep your heater submerged, but the third chamber of this tank is the return chamber, which is where the water level can change due to evaporation. I bought a more compact heater, so it's smaller and easier to keep it um, submerged. And most importantly, I have an auto top off or an ATO on this tank. So the water level is maintained at the same level and it does not get too low from evaporation. You can check out my previous video that talks about setting up an ATO. So now that I have my middle chamber all cleared out and my macroalgae is chosen, all I need to do is set up my refugium light, which will shine into the middle chamber and provide the light needed for macroalgae growth. Following the instructions provided by Reef Casa, we'll install the Nova refugium light. It's pretty easy. You just take it out of the box Determine the position where you want to mount it. Use a razor blade or X-Acto knife to score and then cut the black vinyl only where the light will be. Carefully peel off the vinyl and then use the adhesive Velcro strips that are included to attach the light. The Velcro makes it so you can easily remove the light for cleaning and maintenance. As you can see, it's really nice because you won't be able to see the light or the wires since they're behind the tank. 
be sure to use a drip loop when you plug the light in so water can't drip down the cord and into your electrical outlet. Now the macroalgae can be added to the refugium chamber. And finally, you'll want to decide on your light schedule and may want to use a smart plug or some kind of timer to set the on and off time for the refugium light. I'll be setting my light on a reverse light schedule, which is where it's on while the regular tank lighting is off, as this is thought to help stabilize the pH in the tank. For now, I'll just turn it on and off manually using the switch on my power strip, but I'll plan to set up a timer later. And just like that, our tank is ready to support the growth of beneficial macroalgae and microorganisms in the refugium. You probably already have some copepods in your tank naturally that will now have a nice protected place to grow and reproduce. But if you don't have any yet, you can add some to the tank if you want. I'll probably pick up some pods next time I go to my local fish store. So there you have it folks. We've successfully set up a refugium in the middle rear chamber of our Studio 12 all-in-one tank by Reef Casa. With the Reef Casa Housekeeper Media Rack, a more compact heater, and a refugium light our tank is now optimized for a thriving reef ecosystem. Thank you for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more reefing tips and fun content. Remember, by incorporating a refugium, we're taking an important step toward creating a more stable and vibrant reef environment. Until next time, happy reefing.